Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I want you to know what an honor it has been for me as chair of the Economic Development Committee to join with you in this robust discussion of raising the wage. I wanted to just acknowledge that there have been many heads and many hearts uh, in this discussion uh, over the past several months. Uh, our mayor opened the discussion uh, early on, uh, discussing about the importance of, of raising the wage. We've had uh, engagement from the business community, from everyday working people, and from my colleagues around the horseshoe. It's clear that raising the wage is one tool of addressing the issues around poverty and income disparity. It's not the silver bullet. It's just one of the tools uh, that we have to employ. The discussion about uh, uh, better jobs, about uh, housing, um, social services, all come into play. Nevertheless, uh, we are embarking upon, I think, the most progressive minimum wage policy anywhere uh, in the country. And we should be doing it here in L.A. Don't you agree? All right. <clears throat> we've had studies. We've had four studies. We've had hearings. Uh, we've had conversations uh, around ra raising the wage. Uh, raising the wage for the most vulnerable uh, in our society, those at the, at the very bottom. I think we've been sensitive to concerns of small businesses. Uh, like some of you, I've, I've been a small, had a small business, and so I understand the challenges of signing the check on both sides uh, and about making sure that uh, businesses are able to uh, adhere to regulatory issues, uh, do their marketing, uh, make the payroll, uh, uh, and still uh, make a profit. Uh, and so we're sensitive to the concerns uh, of small businesses, sensitive to the concerns of, of the nonprofits uh, that do an extraordinary job uh, throughout the city, uh, and and those special organizations uh, that provide services like Homeboy, Priscilla's uh, Conservation Corps. Uh, I think we've tried to to achieve the balance, achieve the recognition that everybody has uh, an important role to play, especially those organizations that provide life skills and, and counseling and, and rehabilitation, uh, and making sure that. Uh, individuals can come back into the workforce. We've taken some some concerns about monitoring. We've, we've heard concerns raised by members around the Horseshoe and others that we have to monitor uh, this increase. Uh, and we have to give it some time so we have some figures to, to figure out exactly what the impact is going to be, and it should be a thorough discussion. We know we've got to provide enforcement uh, of, these, uh, of this regulation uh, in a whole variety of ways, including concerns about anti-discrimination. We have to address those issues uh, and concerns as well. Now, while we've done a lot, while we've done a lot, there's still a lot to do, still a lot more to be done. Um, our committee is going to be taking a, a, another look at issues around service charges and, and how those, those funds should be allocated, uh, about sick days, uh, about transitional uh, employees. So we still have some real work to do. Uh, your involvement, your participation, your support is continue to be, uh, we continue to, to solicit your ideas and your suggestions uh, as, as we move forward. Our goal, obviously, is to do the most good uh, and, and the least harm, uh, and I'm confident that we can do that. It is a, a leap of faith, uh, this policy is to some degree, uh, led by our hearts and led by the facts that we have to do all we can uh, to uh, address the issues of uh, poverty, income disparity, uh, in our city at this time, uh, uh, and we have a moral obligation to do so. And so, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I ask for an I vote uh, on the committee. Chair, Mr. Price. <laughs> oh, Mr. President. Thank you. <laughs> I ask for an I vote on the committee's uh, recommendations uh, and the amendments and all the amendments that have been offered uh, at this time.